Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. We have an American classic here. This one is just like an icon. You look at it and you, you know, just if you know anything about mandolins at all, you look at it and you just instantly go, that's an old Gibson, you know. And old is relative terms. It's, uh, doesn't seem all that old to me anymore. <laughs> This one's got that classic look from the uh, 60s, 70s era. And in that era, they weren't, to be honest with you, just they weren't too well thought of. And there's good reason for that on a lot of them. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, you'll find an occasional gym in that era. But uh, they had a lack of quality control or they, a lack of I just don't give a you-know-what anymore when they were building these. And this is kind of one of those, uh, when you look at it at first, you think, well, there's nothing wrong with that mandolin. Just pick it up and play it, you know, tune it and play it. But it does have one fairly significant issue. I don't know, can you tell what the issue is if I turn it like that? A little hard to see with the pick guard on that side maybe try it like this and you probably still if you don't know much about mandolins or sitting there thinking there is not that much wrong with it I don't see anything wrong well I think the clue that I turned it around lets you see it better is is the angle here is just not much of an angle for an f5 mandolin it's pretty darn flat and yet the strings are pretty high off the fretboard, so it's hard to play and very low angle here. So what does that really mean or what's that translate into? Well, it translates into that the neck is not at a steep enough angle. The neck is sitting on it kind of flattish. It should be, and I'm exaggerating obviously, but it should be like this and it's kind of like that. This one comes to me a little bit with handcuffs on. What do I mean by that? Well. You know, the customer wants it playable, but he doesn't want to go into it too deep. Well, in a way, that's a good thing, because to be honest, I'm swamped with work, and so I don't need to go too deep into anything right now. It would just be almost a blessing in disguise. But it makes it hard to do something with this. I think a mandolin like this, in this particular situation, the, you know, the first thing most people want to do is lower the bridge. Well, you know, this bridge has already been lowered very significantly. Uh, the saddle has been cut down. The bridge itself has been cut down. Of course, that's why the angle is not very steep here, but then the strings are still too high. So you think, well, what else can you do? Well, you know, one option, and I'm not saying it's a great option, but one option is you put a wedge under the fretboard and you raise the, the fretboard up a little bit. That way you can raise this back up and get a better angle here. And that would work and it would be fine. And if it were not a, you know, more or less uh, high dollar Gibson type mandolin, I would say let's just do that. But then again, you know, you hate to do that on a mandolin like this. Well, what's the other option? The other option is you go deep and you take it apart and you change the neck angle. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've never done that on a mandolin, you have no idea what kind of can of worms you're opening up there. It's a very hard thing to do to reset a neck on a mandolin. So that's not a good option anyway and of course the customer doesn't want either of those options. He doesn't want a wedge and he doesn't want me to reset the neck. Well another option and I'm just talking out loud another option would be you take the back loose here and you kind of do a cheater's neck reset. You twist it back a little bit force the neck back a little bit and you glue it back down and then of course you'd have to trim all this and re and with a mandolin that's a nightmare because you got all of this that's not going to match up right I wouldn't do that either so those are the only options I can really come up with so the only thing we're left with is working with the bridge again and like I said in this particular case because I'm so busy I'm kind of glad that's the option because I can do that fairly quickly even though it's going to take a little finesse to cut this bridge down more and get these strings where they need to go. Um, when you start cutting things down real thin, they start getting weaker too. But here we go. We're going to, that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on trying to get this bridge to, to work with this mandolin and make it playable. 
After I took the strings off of it, I looked down the fretboard and I could see an underbow. When I put the straight edge on it and I look at it like this, I can't see where those frets are not touching. They don't, I mean, it just, it looks like they're touching. Pretty much flat as a pancake. But when I look down it, I see an underbow. So I got this little feeler gauge out and it's a piece of brass. It's a piece of 2000s brass. And it slides under there pretty much all the way. Well, from the third fret to about the 12th or so fret, from about the third fret to about the 12th fret roughly, there's an underbow. So I was right. It, it definitely has an underbow when you look at it. And uh, I'm going to first thing try to do is pull that underbow out and get it just as flat as we can get it because all of that makes a difference. Um, especially on trying to uh, get one like this to, to play. I have no idea whether or not this truss rod is adjustable or not, but that's loose, so that's not it. And that one's, yeah, that one fits it, I think. Okay, so I'm going to try to tighten it a little. Seems like it tightened up. Tighten it a little more there. I'm going to look down it again and see if I can tell anything about it. That actually looks a little bit better, but not completely flat. Try it just a little bit more. And now let's see if it's flat. I, you know, I'm, I have no idea. You're just guessing. Yeah, it still goes under there quite a bit, actually. Oops, I had it in the wrong place. Let me try that again. Yeah, it's very, it's much tighter. I can feel it grabbing now. So it's definitely, I, I had the uh, end of the ruler up on the nut. I was wondering why it slid under there so easy. Yeah, it's actually tighter. It, it goes under there now, but just barely. So a little bit more tightening, I think we got it. If we can just get it a little bit more. It doesn't take a lot. So people who get in there and rank down on them truss rods, you're asking for trouble. All right, now now it's just about flat. It, you know, you can get it under there if you wiggle it good. But two thousandths of an inch, ladies and gentlemen, I know this probably looks thick, but it's not. It's literally paper thin. As a matter of fact, I think a paper is more like four thousandths. So this is very thin. And it just barely goes under there. That's way better than it was. If I can get it a hair more, I'm going for it. I don't want to break this thing. Yeah, that's that's about as good as we're going to get, I think. Okay, so that's a that's a starting point. I think the customer had just put new strings on this, and uh, I don't know. I'm tempted to try to work around them, but I think because we got so much work cut out for us, I'm just going to have to go ahead and sa sacrifice his strings here. Okay, one of the problems I saw with this bridge right away is that it has a lot of lean to it, and it leans towards the tailpiece. And that's okay. I, I would, If they're going to lean, I'd prefer them to lean that way, but it's leaning a lot. And therefore, it's not ground, you know, relatively flat. So, I, and you might be able to tell that by looking at the end of it here. I don't know if it'll focus on that well enough, especially focus on that end right there. But it's uh, it's thinner on this back edge than it is on this edge. So it's it's tapered, you know, across like this, if you will. Anyway, um, and the because it's been thin so much, the screws are already bottoming out here. But we're still going to have to take some more height off of this. The saddle has been thinned through here, and you know we may have to thin that just a hair more too to get it down. It doesn't have to go a lot down. I think we're talking. You know, if we could drop the, this whole thing about twenty or thirty thousandths, that would probably do it. But 20 or 30 thousandths when you're already kind of bottomed out is, is quite a bit. So here we go. We'll see what we can do with this. Uh, I'm not sure how to hold this to work on it because it's just not done well. I think I'm going to start by working in the vise 
holding it upside down like this, which I can't really hold it well this way, but I think I can hold it. I've got a small double cut file here, and I'm going to try to cut the feet flat again where they're not tilted one way or the other. I don't see any point in putting a different bridge on here because we just have to cut a brand new bridge all the way down. This is not the best bridge in the world in my opinion. This is looks like rosewood, but if you're going to cut it this far down, it might as well be rosewood. I don't see any point in putting a new ebony bridge on here and then cutting it this far down. Okay, I've leveled it up quite a bit. I can tell it's a lot more square than it was. Let's see what it looks like on top of the mandolin now. Okay, it's a lot more square for sure. Definitely a lot more square. But it doesn't fit the top at all. And I didn't expect it to exactly. I can tell this corner is very, uh, you know, it's protruding down a lot on this corner, so I'm going to work just on this corner right now. I don't expect this to fit real well by doing it this way yet, but I want to get it relatively close so I can just sand it the rest of the way. And I think we're taking quite a bit off of it. Actually, that's beginning to look pretty close. A little bit more work, I think. I think the poor fit has caused a lot of problems on the top of the mandolin here too. It's, it's kind of dug it up a lot and hopefully after we get it fitting real good, uh, you know, it won't scar up the top so much. Because like, it was riding on one edge and I think it was riding on the points a lot. That's looking much better. I'm going to give that a shot. Try to get it approximately where I want it. I think you can see that it's by the dark pattern that it's getting most of it here. You, a little light in the center yet, but it's it's coming out. This side's doing real well, so we're gonna we're just about there, I think. I don't know if you could see, but you can see the gold posts sanding off also. We might have to back them posts up inside a little bit, put a little epoxy or something in here to keep them from coming down and scratching up the top. Still not uh, riding 100% where I want it to, I don't think, on that far side there. On the treble side, it's giving me more trouble than the base side. I think we might be there. That's pretty close. Let me check that now and visually look at it. Looking down at here, that's probably better than it's been in a very, very long time anyway. Okay. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do before I turn it around here, mark it again as... I'm going to mark it as treble on that side and base on this side and I'm even going to mark the well actually this is cut where I can tell which one goes which way so the, I can tell that's the treble side by the way the bridge the saddles cut I'm going to back these out a little bit of the hole just a little bit not very much because there's not a lot left I'm backing them out with my fingers I can untwist them with my fingers there yep so they're below the hole depth now. They're not, they're not sticking through. So I'm going to put a drop of CA glue right there on the uh, threads. And then I'm going to run the threads back up almost flush or maybe even past flush. And then bring them back down. I'm trying to get super glue on those threads pretty good. Up and down, up and down like that. And just before it goes to the surface, I'm stopping it. Wipe off the extra super glue. And then I'm going to go ahead and spritz it with this accelerator. All I'm trying to do is keep the threads from working their way through by working this. You know, I just don't want the 
threads to go into the top of the mandolin. And they're just barely recessed there, so that should be no problem. We'll go to the other side now, do the same thing. Just one drop of super glue is all it needs. Okay, so that's in there, and now I'm going to work this back up to where it's almost flush, and it definitely got all over those threads, I can tell. And then just below, and just backing it up and down a little bit. That'll lock it in place so that these studs don't go moving around on us. Now I'm going to put them all the way down. Now ordinarily I don't like them all the way to the bottom, but we, you know, this is not your ordinary situation. So I'm putting them all the way to the bottom. I'm making sure I get the treble side and the bass side lined up. And now you can see they protrude through the top just about the amount that I put them through. I don't want them sticking through the top, although that's so minor it doesn't really hurt much. But I'm going to go ahead and file that off. <coughs> and I think I'm just going to use a regular double cut file here. I've got, this is a fine tooth one. I'm going to take a little more than just holding it in my hand, I think. I may have to put it in a vise. And now, for some reason, it doesn't want to come apart, and it's not super glue because it is moving. It just isn't coming off of there. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and file these off a little bit, and I'll bring you back. Okay, that puts them just barely below the surface, and that's about where we want them. And then it's still got a little bit of clearance between the bridge and the bottom there. We're going to start with that because we took quite a bit off the bottom of the feet. And we're going to see how that does. Set, string it back up and we may have to take some more off. And if we do, we'll probably have to take it off of the saddle and work with that. My goodness. Got kind of another issue that I don't like right here, and it's it's like there's stair steps. Uh, it's pushed in so hard in places that it's just... You know, it just isn't smooth anymore. Now, I don't recommend you try this at home, but I'm going to take some 600 and just lightly work on this area here. Then I'm going to go to 1500, then I'm going to go back to semi-chrome polish, and I think I should be able to make it look like I didn't do anything, but yet it should smooth this out. Because it's just not very smooth at all. I just want to get rid of the ridges that are here in the finish it's really you know just not fit well for a long time and that's caused problems in this and it's those problems are not going to go away so the only way to get rid of them is to do something like this and like I said I, I don't like to do this but I don't know what else to try other than just live with it that's far better already I can tell I don't want to go too far with that because I don't really want to sand through the finish I've wet down the end of this paper towel with some warm water and we're going to put just a little bitty dab of semi chrome polish on here and uh, see if we can polish this back out where you don't can't see the scuff marks Yeah, that looks fine. I don't see any indication that we sanded that. Now, that is better. Uh, it's still a little lumpy. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's nothing like it was. It, it actually had little ridges there that w where the thing wouldn't slide, but now it'll slide past those, I think, even though there's still a little bit of a kind of a ridge effect there. Because of these ridges in the top, I don't want them catching on this bridge so I'm going to just take and knock down the very sharp edges on the corners here and right on the very corner here I'm just kind of beveling it or chamfering it or whatever your word is that you like especially right on the corners I'm just going to knock them down a little bit I don't want any sharpness at all because I don't want to cause any further damage to this top it's been damaged enough 
Feels smooth now, slick, no problem. People have asked me several times, how do I know which side of the saddle goes which way? If you look at this saddle here, it's cut on both sides. This, side, this saddle, end of the saddle is not cut on both sides. It's only cut on the back side. This is your E-string. So maybe that will make sense to you. See, it's only cut on this side. It's flat on this side. It's, it's totally flat here. So this is your E-string. This is your G-string. And that's how I make my deer antler saddles is just like that. Let's uh, string her back up. I'll br I'm not going to bore you with that. No, actually I'm going to do a, qu a quick fret leveling first. And I'm not going to show you that either. I've done it so many times on camera. I'm just going to do a quick fret leveling and a quick recrowning. And it's going to be very light. Just enough so that I know the frets aren't going to be an issue when I get the strings back on it here. Well, you can see I've got this mandolin all set up and ready to go. Um, we did a full fret job on it. Uh, did a little more leveling in this area than I was expecting to. Recrowned them, repolished them, uh, oiled, you know, leveled between the frets, oiled the fretboard, did the whole nine yards. Got the, uh, you know, the bridge on there good and set the intonation perfectly. Uh, this is one of those rare mandolins where the treble foot needs to be down that way compared to the bass foot. And you could attribute that to this saddle, you know, where the saddle is cut that way, which makes it go back. But there's thousands of mandolins out there with this type of saddle and they don't have that issue. I, there is something about some mandolins, and I don't know what it is, that requires them to have that foot go back to make the intonation right. And this is just happens to be one of them. Um, didn't, ha, don't believe, I believe that's the first Gibson F5 that I've seen that way, but it needs it. It, uh, the action's good. You can see that it holds the pick at the seventh fret. And, uh, so it's, it's real good. Well, it's a little, it's, you know, it's on the edge of being loose, but it holds it. So it's not bad. But, uh, anyway, let's play a little bit and see what it sounds like. on that that was a little bit of toy heart but it uh, it doesn't play bad now it sounds pretty good it could be more volume it could sound better if it had a taller bridge on it which would mean major surgery for uh, those of you out there keeping score this thing was built on October 3rd 1974 it's got a name inside that I'll let you see because I can't make out what it really says s Riddle maybe, S. Riddle is who looks like signed it. So maybe you can see that inside there. All right, so there's the inside label. And maybe you can see the name there that signed it and the date and everything. It looks like S. Riddle to me. <clears throat> so I hope you enjoyed that quick look at a uh, 1974 Gibson F5 model. Thanks for watching.